Welcome back. We're going to today. We're at Sork Scurry and Dirty Murray. It's round three of the 22-23 season. We're in Chatsworth, Georgia. I got Michael Russell to my left in 30B with me and Logan Colbert to my right in four stroke B. Anthony Bennett out front with the points lead. I'm tied for fourth. We're only on the third race of the season though, so don't want to get let them get too far out ahead. Holy shot, holy shot. JP Cruz giving me some last minute encouragement. Good luck, have fun, be safe. We got some footage from Bildo Cross here. Let's get this thing popping off. Go through! We're back on board. John Popham pulling the whole shot. Dustin Hickman to my right in 40B and Brady Mills on the outside and four stroke B. Pulled a decent start here at third going into the woods area, but trying to get by Dustin early. And none of us knew it yet, but Dustin was gonna be a lot of trouble for me actually in this race. Got a little grass track section for a while here before we get into the woods. It's pretty cool, honestly. I guess it's not really grass track, but kinda. So we're getting into the woods here and I can see John Popham's already starting to pull away. He's got a little bit faster pace than Dustin here. And I was just kind of tied up behind Dustin there and Brady Mills just comes right in, swoops in front of me, and I honestly wasn't that happy about it because I'm trying to go forward already, you know? Like, I'm already getting held back. I'm trying to go forward and I'm going backwards. I think that's Jose Santos there, 200 2 DFB class. I think he actually DNF. Not sure what happened to him. He might have gone down. So now I got Brady Mills in front of me and Dustin Hickman. I'm look, doing a little quick check behind me, see what's going on back there. Track was pretty rooty. Um, not much ruts, but a lot of roots and a bunch of braking slash acceleration bumps through the turn. So in almost every turn, you're basically hitting like tiny little whoop de doos And a lot of roots. Here goes Zach Irwin, 251 plus B class, already checking up. I was coming in here, thought I could sneak by Brady Mills and he was actually checking up. He probably would have let me ride on by if I was more aggressive with it, but I don't know what it is. I'm trying I'm too nice out there. Tried to make a little hotline here, but not sure who that rider was, but looked like he had the same idea. Didn't go that well for him though. He wasn't too fast to get back on the bike. You can see in some of these sections there's a lot of like kind of off camper routes. We got Matthew Whitaker and Michael Sullivan here. Looks like they all ran into each other or something. I was able to get by Brady Mills there. He got tied up on the left side. And Hey, make sure you hit the subscribe button if you enjoy this kind of video. Hit the little bell if you want to get updates when I put new videos out. I'm putting them out weekly now. But uh, all support is appreciated. Doesn't cost you anything. I'm looking for a little hotline here on Dustin Higdon. Tree almost rips me straight into the ground really struggling to get by here. I don't know, hit the thumbs up button if you think I should just be screaming like a suck hog to get by. Uh, and uh, hit the thumbs down button if you think I should just passively fade into nothingness, and quiet solitude in the background. So despite my previous efforts uh, being a total failure, I still thought it was a good idea to go off into random woods and try to create a hotline, which ended in complete disaster. Brady Mills, Justin Matthews, Anthony Bennett getting by me. That's putting me back into what? Uh, fourth place. I don't know who that was on the KTM, but I was not about to let him get by me. I was full roadblock mode at that point until I got my bike going again. So it didn't take too long to catch back up to this group. They're in basically freight train mode. You got Justin Matthews in front of me, Anthony Bennett, um, Brady Mills in front of him, and then I think Dustin Higdon up there. Justin Matthews kind of checked up, let me by, so puts me into third behind Anthony Bennett running in second and then John Popham is out front with the lead and we don't really know how far ahead he is at this point. I 
don't think he's up there in front of Dustin. Oh, look. Anthony Bennett's got a twinsy. I don't know who that is, though. We got alternate lines coming up here on the hill climb. Well, not really a hill climb, but it's a hill. That left line is a bit slower, but fortunately, I think he checked up for me to come on by. Another instance where if I was more aggressive, I think I could have just slipped right in front of Brady Mills there without too much trouble. So we got Brady Mills in front of me, Dustin Higdon. There's Anthony Bennett up there, and I'm not sure who's on that other KTM. Coming around near the end of lap one, the frustration was setting in. I just felt like I just kept running into Dustin here, and all my effort was just futile. I'm trying to make a pass on the inside here, and it's just not working. Again, off camber here, had to be careful. Coming around lap one, third place, Anthony Bennett in second, John Popham in first, Dustin Higdon's giving me a nod there. I'm like, I don't know why I didn't just say something right here. Like, hey bro, let me buy a different class. I'm going a little faster than you. But I'm just silent. Like, wh what are we doing? Just eating roost for no reason. This turn was actually a little bit sketchy. There was a lot of roots in there and he's going pretty fast. It's Tim Michelle there, 45A class. I'm not sure why he's lollygagging so much. So I'm trying to pick up the aggression here, make some moves, get past these guys. I keep, you know, I got the speed, but I'm making these little mistakes, little bobbles, not being aggressive enough. Take this left line here, get past Dustin. Just pass number one on him. Tight little section transi transitions over into another part of the track. Got Coleman Owens giving some encouragement there, but I pass, I mean, I follow Brady Mills on this line to the right here and just, it's a crap line. I let Dustin right back by me. I was so irritated right there. Like, dude, I just spent an entire lap trying to get by this one guy. And then I make a tiny little line choice mistake right after I pass him and he's right back in front of me. So, again, try and crap hotlines. Get super frustrated. Yeah, you can hear it. Got Austin Jaron in front of me there in the B class. This clip is a kind of better, longer example of what it's like when you're just stuck behind someone and you can see people pulling away from you. And I mean, I have a faster pace than Dustin, but Dustin's pulling away from me. So that's where the frustration just really starts to creep in. I'm not sure who that is off to the left who went down. But then you end up on these weird little lines that just, it's just a nightmare. But I was able to get by. Getting into the late evening here. We got the sun going right in our eyes up some of these hills. It was a little sketchy, actually. Again, could have been more aggressive with that. I think I could have just gone on right on by, but I don't know. I'm too nice out there. And then here's another example of just trying to take an alternate line, but it's just not as good. into a more of a kind of high speed section but I follow Gage Allen here to the right and it turns out it was not a good choice mm. 
Fortunately, Gage didn't have me stuck behind him for too long. He's in 202 PDF B class, and he checked up here after like, I don't know, this is like after a minute or so of riding. Maybe not even that much, but keep in mind, this is a two hour race condensed into 20 minutes. So it's uh, interesting to keep perspective on it as we're seeing a really condensed version. So right here, the frustration is built. I'm just now, you know, I'm, I'm pushing just to catch back up to Dustin, who I've been trying to get by all for almost two laps now. So my main competition, Anthony Bennett and John Popham, they're just checking out. So this is kind of like the, what I would call the swampy section. The dirt's a little different in here. It's all rutted out, a bit soft. Getting back up behind Dustin here. He's looking back at me. And found a little line to the right here. Was able to put past number two on him. In this oh. no way dude kidding me. I was not happy I'm sure you can tell by the use of my censorship that I was not using happy words at this time but that allowed Dustin Higdon back by and Logan Culver neither of which are in my class so it is not passes for position, but it is slowing my pace, which means I'm having more trouble catching the leaders. So, little mix up there in the top five, couple guys moving around, but top three, we are all still in the same position. Got Coleman Owens up here. Giving some encouragement, always appreciated. Landon Dodd in front of me from 250B class. I believe that's who that is. But uh, yeah, it's like one little mistake lets guys buy me and then I'm stuck behind those guys. So at this point, I just decided if I catch back, I mean, when I catch back up to Dustin, I'm just gonna rev bomb the hell out of him until he gets out of the way. Cause I just can't keep sitting back here, you know, being passively slow. I think he actually apologized to me as I get by him here the third time. I only gave him a little rev, but he checked up a little bit. I think he actually apologized to me after the race, but there's Wesley Cronick, 38 class. Um, I was kind of uh, focused on something else when he came up to me, so I don't think I really acknowledged him, but I know he wasn't trying to hold me up or anything, but he was kind of racing me hard for being in a different class, and I really wasn't revving at him or saying anything to let him know. So, uh, you know, this it's really my deal, but uh, frustrating nonetheless. All right, I'm back up here with Anthony Bennett. That was putting some comfort back in my blood. This was a cool little section with the switchbacks. It's nice and flowy through here. It's not as much roots and stuff. I was feeling comfortable here, feeling like, okay, I'm right up here behind, behind Anthony. We got, I got a good pace. It's not gonna be a big problem for me to hang with them. Uh, the biggest problem is just gonna be finding somewhere to actually make a pass. The issue was we kept coming up on other riders like this. We got Forrest Busby, 202 DF and A class. And uh, you can see this line to the right is way better. But, um, when we would get a rider between us, it became really hard. I would just see Anthony pulling away as I took a few seconds or a minute to pass the rider between us. And it just made it almost impossible to stay right on him. So we got Brady Mills. He seems like he's fading a little bit. I don't know. Let's go, bro, let's go! Some footage from Juan Corridor, giving some sideline encouragement. So we come through lap three, Brady, positions not moving around too much. Cam, Cam Morrow's moved up to seventh. He started in last place. I'm yelling at Brady to let me by. He's currently running in second in his class out of four, which I believe is where he actually finished. I don't actually know him, but he's been in my videos a lot. So I know who he is, but uh, 
I figured if I yelled at him with his name, he would be more current, inclined to let me buy. But I did have the pace on him, so it was really inevitable. Not sure who that rider is on the KTM, but that Anthony Bennett's right up there in front. And I'm getting right up behind him here. It's interesting to hear his bike because we have the same, in well, my bike's a couple years newer, I think. It's updated model, but still very similar. But when you hear his bike from the back and you hear mine from on board, it just sounds completely different. As I get by Matt Parker, 45A. So just no another example, having to get by someone in between us and then reeling Anthony back in and then boom, another guy in between us. And the video doesn't do it justice how long it takes to get by some of these guys. It's also a little hard to tell, but through here, it's like super whoop-de-doo-ish through the turns and a lot of roots, bumps. So you really gotta have your suspension set up properly or else you'll just be losing the front end on every turn, I think. Sun in the eyes ended up making a little mistake here. I don't mean, I don't know if the sun was it, but the track was a little tricky through there with the roots. All right, so we got Logan Colbert between us now. He's the one that started to my right and passed me when I decided to stall it. That bike sounds different too. So I figured the swamp area here was gonna be the spot where I could pass Anthony. We are on what, the fourth lap right now, I believe, so. I was thinking um, if I didn't pass him somewhere else on the track, this was gonna be the spot to get him on the last lap. I just needed to figure out a good line through here because there it was one of the only spots that had like a bunch of multiple different lines. Will Steven Piper coming by leading double A. And then I guess his brother Gavin is behind me here and I'm letting him by. There's a log at the top of this thing where it hits your right foot if you don't be careful and it really slows you down coming through that little switchback. This is Josh Bowling, the photographer. Make sure you check out his photos. There's another photographer there. I don't know who that is. I don't think it was Tyra Crane. Juan Corridor. Giving some good encouragement as we come through lap four. Not much changing. A little bit that back there in the top 10. Anthony Bennett got a little gap on me. I got Terry Post here in front of me from 50A. So we're coming back into the swampy section on the final lap and things are about to get interesting because I got Bolton Broth behind me in double A trying to lap me, but I'm right here behind Anthony trying to go for second place in my class. Bolton is uh, revving out at me, but I knew from the timing of the last double-A guy passing me that Bolton wouldn't have been able to pass for third. So I was like, dude, I'm not moving out of your way. If you pass me, that's fine. But you can see him on the left trying to get by me. He's pissed, revving out, but right here, I was like, I could just sneak by with him right by Anthony, and I just didn't. I was thinking it would be immoral or something to do so. So... In my opinion, that's a big mistake. I should just be super aggressive out there. This is a race, not a rally. We're out there to win. I don't know what it is with me. I'm trying to be nice to everybody out there. But really, this is only the beginning of the drama on this last lap as we try to get by John Henson here, 50 A class. He's just getting marauded by the double A guys. Now me and Anthony. And I know he wants to get out of the way, but man. 
I'm just watching Anthony leave. You know, this is the last lap. We're like a mile from the, a uh, couple miles from the finish. There's Zach Irwin again. Second lounging appearance in this video. So I'm thinking about where I could still pass Anthony at in the remainder of this race. And I started to drop back a little bit, but I actually started to pull him back in with about a mile ago. And then this next clip is a bit cringy for me. I mean, you can't see anything gory happen or anything, but I am about to get injured in this next one. So I'm just gonna step back and let this thing play out for a minute. you can hear how disappointed I was in my voice there. I mean, I knew pretty much instantly my, my finger was injured pretty bad. My bike's all busted up. When I hit the tree, something just hit my finger in a really weird way, and it felt like it just pulled my entire index finger straight backwards. And, uh, and then it just felt like the whole thing got smashed by a sledgehammer, you know, that like numb tingling feeling as two of my competitors just passed me there. Um, yeah, apparently I tore the radial collateral ligament that holds the left side of my right knuckle together on my index finger, and um, yeah, ended up coming through in fifth. Not happy about it. Was running third, trying to go for a second, and just blew it up. So Anthony Bennett maintains a points lead by one point with that second place finish, and I'm dropping back to fifth. I'm going to see how fast I can heal this thing up and see you guys out at the next one. I'll see you! Dude, you okay? So, I think I blew my finger up. Ooh. Huh? Is that a turn